happens when you strength train and don't eat enough protein? Is your workout routine breaking down more muscle than it's building? I'm Janet McConnell, national champion bodybuilder in my late 60s and a fitness educator who's coached hundreds of adults over 50 with this exact issue. Together, we'll look at what's happening inside your muscles, why recovery stalls out, and how to match your protein to your training so that your progress finally moves forward. Let's start with what's actually happening inside your muscles every time you pick up a weight. When you strength train, you create tiny little micro tears in your muscle fibers. That's not bad, that's good. This is how your muscles get the message to adapt, to repair, and to come back stronger. Think of it like telling your body, hey, we need more reinforcement over here. This is kind of falling apart a little bit. Let's fix that. Your body definitely gets the message, but it can only respond in your favor. If it has the materials to repair, what just broke down? This is a natural process in the human body. And this breakdown and repair cycle starts to slow down sometime in our 30s. And after age 50, it slows down even more because of something called anabolic resistance, meaning that your muscles need a stronger signal and more amino acids to rebuild. It's easier to build muscle when you're younger. And for the rest of us, it takes a little more grit and determination. So. The training is the stress and the little micro tears and the protein are the building supplies that support the repair. If the stress increases, but the support doesn't show up in the wake of that, that's when things start to go wrong. Let's talk a little about that mismatch where damage and repair need to meet in the middle to make the magic happen. So here are the biggest consequences of strength training without enough protein. Number one, you stay longer in breakdown mode. After lifting, your body enters this little window where it wants to repair tissue right away. It's uh, kind of like an EMT driver, get to the accident right away. If there aren't enough amino acids available, your body just kind of stays in this catabolic mode, meaning breakdown is happening faster than you're building back. Instead of building muscle, you're slowly losing it. This is the person who says, I'm working out, but I look exactly the same six months later. Or my body feels soft instead of toned, even though I'm lifting weights. Or I'm actually losing strength. Over time, I'm, I'm just feeling weaker and I should feel stronger. And they're not lying. I mean, they are training hard. They're just not giving their body the materials it needs to do anything with that training to put back and reinforce what was taken away. Number two, recovery slows way down. When you're underfueled, here's the symptoms of that. Soreness lasts longer. Workouts feel more like a struggle physically. Exhaustion hits you sooner and you need more days to recover. You just still feel kind of like lackluster and you don't feel a sense of strength returning between each lifting session. I see this constantly with clients, especially new ones where they aren't quite using all the proper habits together. They're just learning the ropes. Their training is dialed in because I'm there for it and I see it happening. But they're eating salads and soups and fruits and snacks, all the healthy foods, but super low in protein. Simple fix, add 30 grams of protein at breakfast and suddenly their recovery skyrockets and they get the memo. And then they're like, okay, where, where else can I fix my nutrition throughout the day? But that first hit in the morning, man, that is a winner. Number three, your metabolism drops. Muscle is metabolically active tissue. It's your engine. And when your engine repair cycle is incomplete, muscle slowly declines. And that means your metabolism slows down too. This is how people end up with, ah, I'm working out more, but I'm hungry all the time. And I'm eating more and I'm gaining fat. 
it's kind of a paradox and it's not what I was told would happen. It's not that their workouts are wrong, clearly. It's that their fuel isn't complete. Number four, hunger and cravings increase. So hunger increasing is a good sign. So don't let that fool you because it means that your metabolic rate is coming up because you're expending it in the gym and throughout your day. And so especially when you first wake up in the morning and the first sensation you have is hunger, that's real. Eat and make sure you get those 30 grams of protein in. But sometimes in the middle of the day when hunger and cravings increase, the sneaky thing is when your muscles don't get the amino acids they need, your brain sends hunger signals to look for them. But if you're not eating protein, your body reaches out for its favorite little quick energy resource. And you know what that is? Carbs, sugar, snack foods. Whoa. It's funny because it's easy to blame a lack of willpower, but that's not it. I mean, you're already in the game if you're showing up consistently for your workouts. It's really just lack of amino acids. Fix the protein. Calm the cravings down. Down boy. <laughs> Satiety reigns. It's such a relief when you feel that shift. Honestly, to feel fed, your body just kind of goes, all right, now I've got some things to work with. Number five, your injury risk goes up. Muscles aren't the only tissue that need protein. We don't think about, you know, flexing our tendons or showing off our ligaments. <laughs> but those guys, your tendons, your ligaments, even your fascia, they need protein too and they won't repair or become more flexible or be able to grow with the muscles that are getting stronger. Without enough protein to repair them, joints start to feel irritated. Form breaks down more easily when you fatigue and overuse, the overuse injuries pop up out of nowhere. This is how men and women over 50 end up feeling like they're falling apart just when they're trying to get strong. It can be so discouraging. I had a guy come up to me the other day in the lobby of my gym, not my client, but just a cool dude that I see in passing. And he just, he made a mistake by saying this to me. Oh, my advice to you, don't get old. And so in an instant, I knew what he was talking about. He was in that exhaustion phase where he was feeling it and maybe just had a week before that of not sticking strictly to that regimen of getting enough protein. He was just having an off day. It happens. But he said it to me. <laughs> and of course, my reaction is, um, I'm 20 years older than you. And I have this to tell you, you don't want the road to get easier. You want the legs to get stronger. And he goes, you're no help. <laughs> but I'm thinking of that story right now because that's the kind of, I don't know, psychology that happens to us sometimes when we're doing all the stuff and some days you just feel like, oh, I'm getting old. Look at your protein intake. Look at your calorie intake. Make sure that you're checking all those boxes. It's amazing how, what a difference it makes in how you feel. Now that we've looked at the five important things that happen to us when we under eat protein, let's look at how to match your protein intake into your training demands so that it fits. There's a match. This is the part where many people over 50 aren't made aware of this. Your protein needs to be based on how often and how hard you train and how big or small your body is. I mean, it's a spectrum. And the spectrum doesn't mean weak and strong. The spectrum is tiny person, huge person, right? Because we're all a little different. I mean, logically, you can think of this. A 120-pound yoga instructor, female, isn't going to eat the same amount of protein as a 250-pound male bodybuilder. That's ludicrous. So give yourself some grace here and let's dive in so that you can kind of see where you fit on the scale 
and get a sense of whether or not you're hitting the mark. So this is the part where most people are confused and get a little off track with good reason. I mean, first of all, it's math. So you use your calculator for this for yourself. But let me give you the spectrum, not from weak to strong, from light to heavy. Okay. So in your logical mind, imagine a 120 pound female yoga instructor and how much protein she needs to repair, to stay flexible, less bot, less um, muscle mass, right? Than a 250 pound male bodybuilder, huge individual. They're going to eat a completely different place on the spectrum of grams of protein per pounds of body weight. So big range. How do you know where you land? Let's talk about that. The more often you train and the more intensely you train in that range, that's going to shift things. So if we break it down by intensity, you can plug yourself in and kind of see where you land. Here are some guidelines. Let's start by talking about the lighter end of the spectrum. Light training, I define as one to two days a week of exercise. If you're lifting once or twice a week, aim for the lower end of the range, about 0.6 to 0.7 grams of protein per pound of ideal body weight. For example, if you're 120 pounds, that would be 70 to 85 grams per day. If you're 150 pounds, that would be 90 to 105 grams a day. So that gives you an idea of kind of how that works. Focus on 20 to 35 grams per pro of protein per meal. At least one strong leucine rich protein serving daily. And uh, in the in the video right before this, exactly right before this one dropped, I went into some detail about leucine as one of the amino acids and which foods have leucine in them. So when you get done with this video, go back and watch that one if you're not sure. So this would support the basic muscle maintenance for gentle strength gains. So now let's look at more of a moderate, more in middle of the road on that spectrum. Moderate training I consider to be about three days a week. So if you're lifting three times a week, you land in that moderate range of about 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. Here's some examples. You could start like with a 120 pound person, that would be 85 to 120 grams a day. If you're 150 pounds, 105 to 150 grams a day. More like 180 pounds, this would be especially if you're a dude, 125 to 180 grams per day. That's my range. And I'm not a dude because I have a lot of muscle mass. But I say that because women tend to be more on the lighter end of things as a population on uh, weight and then higher end female bodybuilders and guys. <laughs> so priorities at this moderate level is 30 to 40 grams of protein at breakfast. Start off on the right foot, because if you don't, you're behind right out of the gate. It's hard to catch up later in the day because you've got a real good goal of how many grams you need to get in. A solid protein serving within two hours after your training is really smart because you're, you have more muscle tissue to repair and even distribution of protein across your meals starting with breakfast. And it's in this moderate range that most people really start to see real strength gains, faster recovery, better energy, and noticeable improvements in muscle tone. And that is the range that I'm working in. And I can tell you from personal experience, the difference that has happened in the last six months of me really getting on the train again is night and day. Now, let's talk about the heavy end of things, the heavy training. This is especially for people that are on a deadline for a competition, or maybe they are really pushing um, as they come close to an event like an Ironman or a Tough Mudder or a triathlon or something where it is just 
you, you feel like you're training all the time and it's really putting a lot of expectations and pressure on your goals and your gains. And you're putting in a lot of uh, sweat and you're creating a lot of micro tears. So here's what it looks like. Four plus days per week. So maybe seven days a week. Don't do that for long. You need rest days. But sometimes in crunch time, that's kind of how it falls together. If you're lifting heavier or more frequently, aim toward higher performance range. About one to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of ideal body weight. So for example, if you're a 150 pound athlete, you would want to eat 150 to 225 grams of, of protein a day. I know that's a lot. It's a lot of chewing. You have to start as soon as you wake up. 180 pounds, 180 grams to 270 grams a day. And 200 pounds, you're going to have 200 to 300 grams a day. That's how much my trainer, Big Matt, eats. So I look to him and I know that's how he grows. That's how he stays energetic. He is a massive human being and he has to eat a massive amount of protein to maintain that. And for this category, there are some priorities, little uh, tweaks in your habits that can help. One is have some protein before your workout and have a full serving after your workout. So before your workout, get in good 20, 25 grams. After your workout, 25, 35, 40 grams to really boost your energy and to come in right away with some repair materials that's kind of between meals and then get the rest at your meal. And you're going to have slightly higher total calories anyway because you're bigger, but to support your recovery, your strength adaptation, and your hormone balance. And it leaves you feeling great. This level on the spectrum, on the high end, this is what supports the biggest improvements in strength, muscle retention, performance, and energy, especially for active adults over 50 who are pushing intensity. Your workouts matter. Your efforts matter. But your body can only respond if it has the building blocks to repair what you're asking it to do. Strength training gives your body the signal. Protein gives it the building materials. And I would add, protein gives your body your respect because you are standing back. You are watching a medical miracle, a biological miracle happen. You put it in motion and you give the stuff to your body and voila, magic. When those two things match, it makes you unstoppable. I've covered a lot today. Let me know in the comments if you have any specific questions that I didn't address overtly in my message today. And the video I just made previous to this one, as I mentioned earlier, gives a good amount of the how-tos for getting enough protein day to day, how to manage your meals and plan and think about it, including really good sources of leucine, which is the amino acid in protein that is the on switch for muscle repair. Remember to subscribe if you want to be a part of this community where we learn to live strong, move strong, and age strong.